Girls, we know your brains may be fried from the SAT, but we got a lot of good stuff for you this week. Let's kick it off. Off, we sent some kids over to Richardson's Corn Maze to check out their theme and some activities they've got going on. We went to Richardson's and we got a look on what was happening there this fall. Richardson's is categorized as agritainment and it falls in between um, agriculture and tourism kind of, I guess you'd call it that. We spend a lot of time deciding what the theme for the year is going to be. Uh, not just uh, a theme that would be interesting to people and to the public and to the press, but also a theme that would make a good picture in the cornfield. We're celebrating the uh, 50th year since the inception of Earth Day in 1970. Along with the world famous corn maze, there are also other activities there. The types of activities that the corn maze has are wide and varied. So um, there's campfire areas where you can go and get a picnic table and hang out for a bit. There's obviously the corn maze there. They have, um, you can buy pumpkins, things of that sort. And we've got the slides, pedal carts, the observation tower, the jumping pillows, the train, the carousel, the animal barn, the pig races, which are my specialty. They've also had to make some changes due to the COVID pandemic. The farm has done a few things to help um, mitigate any transfer. And one of those things is they took the workers and they separated them into two different details. A lot of planning went into being very careful with sanitation protocols, um, signage for all of the buildings. Uh, I think we have four people on the outside crew that are sanitizing the, all the contact surfaces and then uh, two people that go inside the buildings and sanitize all the contact surfaces, everything. So it's a really kind of a heartwarming experience, not only for the, the folks that come out, but also for the family to see everybody having a good time. You can also go to the website richardsonadventurefarm.com for more information. Many of you were psyched to hear that Starbucks was coming to Antioch. We went and checked out how they're doing. In the past few weeks, a new Starbucks location has popped up in Antioch. We talked to an employee to see what it's like working as a barista at the new location. Um, and working at Starbucks, they try to take care of their baristas. They are actually quite nice for a company. I actually was hired right before the shutdown, and so I was still taken care of even though I hadn't actually stepped foot in a Starbucks yet. So they actually are very nice, and the co-workers are always awesome. They're very LGBT accepting, and it's a very nice place. Many may think that remembering drinks is hard. Caitlin explained how they do it. The baristas remember, it's actually kind of hard to remember. There's so many drinks, especially seasonal ones, that actually sometimes we don't. And you'll see a barista run up to one of the registers to just quick type in the drinks because it'll give you the recipe on the side. And some of them are like ingrained in there, especially Tic Tac ones now. That iced coffee with white mocha is burned into my brain. My least favorite drinks uh, right now to make are the ones with the cold foams because because of TikTok, like every drink has a cold foam now and it takes just like an extra 20 seconds and we only have two pitchers, so it can just be a little time consuming. How we feel about making frappuccinos, it can vary from barista to barista. Some of us uh, have a tendency to, uh, every time one's ordered, just kind of roll your eyes, but only because they take longer to make than the typical drink and we're always timed, especially in the drive through so it's like, especially if you get multiple frappuccinos, it's like, well, here we go. Okay, this is gonna take a while. <laughs> So there is some stigma, but some don't care and some don't really like it. After we got the inside scoop with the barista, we talked to a customer to hear their thoughts. Um, my favorite thing about coming to this Starbucks in particular is because it's a lot closer because the, one, the only other one that we had before was the one in Jewel Osco and it wasn't even open that long, so that kind of stuff. So I'm glad that they built a location that's a lot closer. I don't really come to Starbucks that often. It's usually whenever I feel like it, honestly. It's not really a daily occurrence. This is Taryn Gallo with Eagle Eye News, signing out. As you enter the school, you may have noticed a little bit of construction going on. Mr. Newberry took us on a sneak peek inside the field house. 
This past week, we sat down with Mr. Newberry, Mr. Rawls, and Dr. McKay to talk about the field house. We first talked to Mr. Newberry about how the construction is going so far. Uh, the progression on the field house is going well. They're getting the roof on this, uh, this next couple weeks, and um, after that, they will move to uh, some inside work. I think before winter, they're going to have all of the exterior work done, all the windows in and everything and it'll be sealed up pretty well, so they'll be able to work on the interior for the rest of the time. I'm hoping in the next month, they have the transition finished between the cafeteria and the field house, so you'll be able to sit in the cafeteria and watch kind of the work being done in the field house. So hopefully in the next month or two, they'll have that done. With the field house construction going great, we then talked to Mr. Rawls about how he feels we are gonna use the field house and some of the other general specifications. There's two, really three ways to look at the field house. One, kind of the vision that I have more than anything else would be the practice ability. The ability for our students at Lakes and Antioch to practice safely, effectively, and then get home to actually be a student, to be a, a son or a daughter, to be part of a family, to get another job. Uh, so I look at it as a, a practice facility for all of our sports. Um, in terms of the events that are going to be held in there, the sky's the limit. Um, our district and our school board's done an amazing job in terms of developing everything in the field house, right down to one of the best digital display boards you will ever see. Um, so the, the possibilities in terms of sporting events are endless from sectional cheer and sectional dance to a sectional wrestling championship to high-end track meets, volleyball tournaments, lower level activities and, and, and things of that nature. And I think the third thing to think of it as is more of a a fine arts slash activities slash lakes in Antioch, kind of an amazing space. So to see what we're going to do with our feeder schools in regards to some of our bigger concerts and things like that, um, I think the, the multi-use kind of vision of the space is really what's going to be in there. Just about anything you can think of um, will hopefully find a home in that beautiful facility. When the field house construction is over, it will be nearly 70,000 square feet, which is one-third of our entire high school. It's an immense space, an absolutely amazing facility. Um, and when you start putting people in the actual facility, uh, the, the bleachers that will be permanent in the field house, on the field house floor, roughly 1,100 people can fit into those bleachers, uh, very close to our actual capacity in our main gym now. And then on the north, I should say on the mezzanine, you'll have an additional space for about 300 spectators on the pull-out bleachers. And then additionally on top of that, you have that beautiful mezzanine. Now we then talked to Dr. McKay to see how some of the clubs are going to use the field house. You may know that uh, I think eSports are, are coming. Uh, I think they're just right around the corner. And so we're going to see eSports being used in there. And I see other clubs and activities being able to come in and use them for maybe high profile events. The field house is set to be done in May 2021. This has been Andy Hoffey and Gina Brum signing up for Eagle Eye News. As we close out this week's episode, we wanted to give a huge good luck to girls tennis at sectionals. Go tennis! Sort of the top, Eagle, soar right up to the top and have a great weekend. <laughs>